Today we're going to review function behavior and briefly end behavior limits. This can all be found in section 1.2 of your lecture guide, so let's get started. Describing function behavior entails two primary character characteristics, these being the direction and the curvature of the function. Starting with direction, a function is defined as increasing if output values increase as input values increase, decreasing if output values decrease as input values increase, and constant if output values remain the same as input values increase. Additionally, the curvature of a function is described as concave up on an interval where the graph appears as a portion of an arc that opens upward. The curvature is described as concave down on an interval where the graph appears as a portion of an arc opening downward, and a straight line has no concavity. So in the next few slides, we'll work through a few examples to demonstrate and identify these behaviors. An important thing to note is that any point on a continuous function where the concavity changes is called an inflection point. This can be seen at point A on the graph included in this slide. If you start by looking at the lower left tail of the graph, you'll see that its arc is opening downward as it approaches point A, making it concave down. Conversely, after reaching point A, it begins to open upwards as it approaches infinity, making it concave up. So for my example one, we'll identify the behaviors of four basic functions using the direction and concavity descriptors mentioned earlier. I'm gonna motion with my cursor, the increasing or decreasing areas of the graph, so just be aware of that movement. So beginning with this upper left-hand graph, we'll start by judging direction. Think of it as being split into two halves, from x equals negative infinity to x equals zero. Range, these y values are decreasing but from x equals the zero to x equals positive infinity range, these values begin to increase. This means that this portion can be described as decreasing, and this portion can be described as increasing. In terms of concavity, as our definition described earlier, the arc opens upwards, making it concave up. So with the second graph, it's essentially the same thing, but kind of the inverse. So as our x values go from negative infinity towards zero, our y values go from negative infinity towards zero. So they're increasing. And on this range, as our x values approach positive infinity, our y values are decreasing once again down towards negative infinity. So this portion of the graph is decreasing. And the graph arc is opening downwards, making it concave down. So the bottom two graphs um, look a little bit more tricky kind of the opposite of the first two graphs, these also have changing descriptors, but instead of having two different directions, such as this one being decreasing and then increasing, um, they have two different concavities. So looking at the lower left graph, we know that it's increasing from x equals negative infinity to x equals infinity because the y values are increasing the entirety of the way. But um, because the graph has an inflection point at x equals zero, this indicates that we see a concavity change. So on this range from x equals negative infinity towards zero, we see that our graph arc is opening downwards, making it concave down. And as we go from x equals zero towards x equals positive infinity, our arc is opening upwards, making it concave up. And again, this is kind of works the same way for the second graph, just the converse. So it's decreasing the entirety of the way because our y values are going from positive infinity towards negative infinity. And prior to our inflection point, our arc is opening upwards, making it concave up. And after our inflection point at x equals zero, we're opening downward, making it concave down. Finally, we have end behavior limits, which I'll touch on briefly and just give a simple example of. So the end behavior of a function describes output values of a function as input values that either increase or decrease without bound. It can be estimated by evaluating the function at increasingly large or decreasingly small input values. This process is called numerical estimation. So the notation the limit of x as x approaches infinity of f of x equals l indicates that the output values of a function f have a limiting value l as x increases or decreases without bound. When a function has a limiting value l, the line with the equation y equals l is called a horizontal asymptote. The notations, the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x equals infinity and f of x equals negative infinity indicate that the output values of a function f do not have a limiting value, but instead increase or decrease indefinitely as x increases or decreases without bound. So in this example, we kind of see what we talked about in the last slide. 
we know that from before that this range is decreasing because your y values are decreasing and it's concave up because the arc opens upward. And the opposite goes for this range. It's increasing as y approaches zero and it's concave down because the arc opens downward. But we can also describe the behavior of this function by its end behavior limits. So we can see that if we follow this curve and watch as the x values continue to decrease out here towards negative infinity, our y values just kind of stagnate until they reach zero. This means that we've met a horizontal asymptote. We can remember it as an asymptote or as a horizontal asymptote because just think of it as a horizontal line that these y values won't cross. So this makes our limit equal to zero. Today we discussed function behavior and end behavior limits. If you'd like some more individualized help, make an appointment with the tutor through the Academic Success Center and they can give you some more tailored support.